open them to the book of Luke, chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, if you'd go there with me the next 20 minutes, I just want to share with you what I believe the Lord has put in my heart for you, and then we'll be bringing all of the students in, and we're going to believe that God's going to impart something powerful on them. This generation needs an impartation of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I don't know if that response was convincing to me, so I'll tell you, this generation requires an impartation of the Holy Spirit more than they need anything else that you could ever provide for them. So if the next generation is going to get an impartation, you know who it's going to come through? Us. So that means we need an impartation of the Holy Spirit. Empty hands will never fill hearts. But if God will fill us, he will fill the next generation. And so may God's word fill us today as we get into this moment to begin to pray for the students. Luke chapter 15, if you would. Luke 15, verse, um, verse, um, there it is, verse 11. Then he said a certain man, this is Jesus, had said, Jesus said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. Not many days after that, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land and he began to be in want. Verse 15. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything. Verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came up to his father, and when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I don't know what falling on your neck means, but I think he hugged him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Can I get an amen here? That's my testimony. How about you? How many of you got the same testimony? Verse 23. And we brought brought the fatted calf. We have the fatted pig. And kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and he is alive. He was lost and he's found. And they began to be merry like they rejoiced. Now his older son was in the field and as he came and drew near the house, he heard music and dancing. And so he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. Sounds like they're having church in Charleston. Verse 27. And he said to him, your brother has come because he has received, we have received him safe and sound. Your father has killed the fatted calf. But the older brother was angry, and he would not go in to the party. <laughs> Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. Verse 29, so he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I've never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might be merry with my friends. But as soon as his son of yours comes, who has devoured your livelihood in harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. Now watch, this is an interesting scripture you folks want to see. Look what he said. Son, you're always with me, and all that I have is yours. That, that's a scripture you might not have paid attention to, but that one I really want to highlight to you today. Son, you've always been with me, and all I have is yours. Verse 32, last for your standing. And it was right there that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is now found. I want to talk about breaking the orphan spirit today. You can be seated. You can be seated in God's presence. We have some uh, amazing people. What an amazing crowd for a Labor Day weekend. A nice one at that. You all like food, I can tell. I hope that you come and join us. They got, they've been roasting pigs yet since yesterday morning, and I, I can't wait to get something to eat. The, the heroes of my church, of this church, are from a variety of reasons and backgrounds, but, but here are a segment. Is that Matt and Kayla back there? Stand up, Matt and Kayla. They haven't even been married 24 hours, and they're in church this morning. Hey! Amen. 
Praise God. You literally have been married 23 hours and, 50, and 45 minutes, and you're in God's house. I felt an extra measure of romance here today. I, I thought it was coming from Helen, but it was right behind her, right there. <laughs> anyway, it's the people in this church that have adopted babies, children, my heroes. I think we ought to honor everybody who's adopted a child in this church. And you, are, you really carry the heart of God. There are a number of people, though, that have adopted children from orphanages. And what they have told us is that it's not unusual to find different areas in the house where those children have taken food and hid it and stashed it away and nobody else was to know where it was. Now, obviously, I think that you would assume and understand that the reason these children did that is when they were coming up through the orphanage, uh, they didn't have that assurance from a mom and dad that they were going to be provided for. In fact, for whatever reason, mom and dad were no longer in existence in their life. And then most of these orphanages are places of deep poverty where they just ration and barely have enough food for the day. And so the children, lacking the parental provision and understanding that they're in a situation that they may not have enough for their, their primal desire, which is to eat, will carry and put together a mentality that not only helps them uh, survive, but it's a mentality that hinders them from thriving. Because what happens is that that child may be taken out of that orphanage and put into a home where there's more than enough provision and more than enough food. They may have left that situation, but they've carried their mentality into the new one. And let's not be harsh, that mentality kept that child alive. But that mentality is not proper for that child to live. You might be thinking, where in the world are you coming from with this? Because not everybody that has an orphan mentality came from an orphanage. We are looking at this story and we're seeing how an orphan mentality produces a backslider. Is Andy here? Where's Andy? Oh, hey, Andy. Praise God, a backslider has come home. Welcome back from Canada. <laughs> and Sonia. I love you guys. I'm not easily distracted today, am I? <laughs> we look at two boys who are the sons of apparently a very wealthy man. But, and I gotta do this quick. But apparently in their minds, they said, we don't have a confidence that you're gonna take care of us. We don't have a confidence that you're gonna provide. We don't have a confidence that there'll be provision for tomorrow. So this inheritance that you have written that belongs to us, we don't wanna wait till legally you're supposed to die and then we get it. We wanna take it now. And when I say we, I mean both sons. Because there's a lot of story given to the younger son who takes all his stuff and leaves. But you read in the last part of that story that the father says to the older son, I've already given you everything I have. All I have is yours. So listen to this, folks. It's an amazing aspect that these two boys took everything that the father had, leaving him with nothing. And they knew it would leave him with nothing. And they still took everything with them out of, I believe, a fear that they would not have what they need in the future. These guys have all of this abundance at their disposal. It belongs to them, but because they're thinking with that mentality, they're gonna take from their future and waste it in their present. Are you all okay? If they would have been intelligent, they would have known that everything of their estate would gain interest. But when you have an orphan mentality, you have this idea that you won't be provided for. You can't be generous. Nobody's looking out for you. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. You never have enough time. You never have enough stuff. You never have, you're entitled. You're jealous. It's, it's, it's you do me one wrong, I'm gonna do you one wrong. And it's this, this idea that you compare your life with everybody else's life. It's all wrapped up in the story of the younger and the older son. But I felt the Holy Ghost, and this is a totally approach to this, and different, and if it's, I'm wrong, blame him. 
But I felt like I needed to come to tell you today that God wants to break the orphan mentality and an orphan spirit off the next generation. The next generation's been told there won't be enough jobs, there won't be enough money, there won't be enough opportunity, there won't be enough hope, there won't be enough of a country. But I've come to tell you, as long as there's a kingdom that will not be shaken, our next generation will have more than enough. Today, today, we have the privilege and we have the responsibility to impart to the next generation that, that this world is not all that there is, that there's a God in heaven who provides for his children. Psalm 112, verse one, I gotta move. Praise the Lord. Psalm 112, yeah. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. I'm not reading the Bangor Daily News, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell I need to start all over because he's talking to you if you'll receive it. Praise the Lord, everybody. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere and an entire generation of godly people will be blessed. Come on, somebody. That's the word of God. Psalm 115, verse 14. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. May your children be blessed. I was in the woods. I can tell right now I'm preaching God's word today because you're not hearing this the other six days of the week. You've had too much CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, Newsmax, Christian television. How about the B-I-B-L-E, amen. How about the word of God? How about we go back here and find out that Jesus said, if the birds aren't stressing out, neither should the children. I was in the woods, mine and God's favorite place the other day. And I looked up into a tree and I saw a bird and he was all over that tree. I mean, he was all over that tree, all over that tree, getting everything he needed. I mean, he was eating and eating and eating and eating. And I'm looking at that little bird, and where I'm at, I'm looking, and there's trees as far as the eye could see. And I had a, my imaginator started working. And I saw a sign designed by Macy and, and engraved by Dan <laughs> over the bird's nest that said, so many worms, so little time. <laughs> Hello? But the average mentality in America is so few worms, so little time. And I went back to the Matthew chapter six where Jesus said, if the birds are not freaking out and if the flowers are not freaking out, then you, my children, should never freaketh out. Why? Because this world is not our resource. Our source is God in heaven and we have gotta break the orphan mentality that God is not enough. The economy may not be great. Things out there may not be good. But what the enemy wants us to do is train our children that God is not good, that God is not fair, that God is not enough, and that God is not near us. I'm telling you, Job said, God is good. He was good before the storm. I feel like preaching. He's good in the storm, and he'll be good when I get out of this storm. I found out my Redeemer lives, and I'm standing on the promises of God. Let's connect our kids to a strong God, not a weak God. So many worms, so little time. How, practically? I gotta wrap it up. Number one, we've gotta learn to testify to our children. Amen. Testify, Te not criticize. They've heard enough of that crap. Sorry, they've heard enough of that crap. I'm, <laughs> I'm just telling you, they need to hear some good news. They need to hear that Jesus is alive. They need to hear what Jesus has done for you. I heard from a very reliable, that's Greek by the way, I heard from a very reliable source. I don't know the, 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 where he got it, but I heard from that, that there is a 0% suicide rate amongst ch grandchildren who are very close to their grandparents. Why? 
Because that grandparent has decades of testimonies to tell that child, when I was here, God did that. When I was there, God did this. When I went through that, God was there for me. I'm here to tell somebody today, it's time to stop testifying for the devil and it's time to start testifying for God and say he's been there, he is there, he'll be there. He's God in the corner, he's God on the mountain, he's God right here. Mm, testify. Tell them what's good. Tell them what's good. Let, it, let, let, let them hear it and give God the glory. Secondly, last one. Testify to them and bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Can I have that bottle of water right there? And then a full bottle. You're fine, Jake. You're fine. Nothing bad's going to happen to you today. Actually, come here. <laughs> Just hold that right there. Just, yeah. Just stand sideways so the people can see it. You can trust me, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down by green pastures. He restores my soul. My cup runs over. You know what I'm looking at? I'm looking at some cups of whom God wants to run over. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen to Jake. <laughs> My cup. You see, see, here, here, God fills your cup. God fills your cup. And if you want him to stop there, and if your faith is there, it'll stop right there. But I want you to let your cup run over so that your kids get the blessings. Come on. My cup. The world... I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm wicked thirsty today. <laughs> it's holy water. The enemy wants to empty your cup. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to, he wants to empty your cup. Uh, anybody know CPR here? You, you're looking at the first preacher who drowned while he's preaching. I'm not kidding. Whew. The enemy want, come on, the enemy, doesn't he? Doesn't he want to drink, doesn't he want to drink your, but you know what? God says, I got more than the enemy's got. If you just keep letting him fill your cup, come to church, let your cup run over and let the blessings fall out over the next generation. I'm running out, come on. But there's more, but wait, there's more water than you've ever imagined. And he's not just in one generation, but for every generation. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill me with faith. Lord, fill me with love so that I over flow under everybody I come into contact with more than enough 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 more joy more peace more strength more faith I want more than I can contain give me more than enough come on let's stand together let's stand together let's lift our hands and thank God that he is the God of more than enough come on would you right out loud begin to thank God you're the God that's more than enough hallelujah healing's coming through you for the next generation power is coming through you for the next generation Strength is coming through you. Come on, moms and dads. Don't you know the enemy's trying to kill your marriage because he doesn't want you to run over, but I'm ready to run over. Yeah. Come on, lift up those voices right now. Lord, let, fill us with the Holy Ghost so that the Spirit of God runs over on these children today as we pray for them.